Hello everyone. Welcome to Apti Plus Academy for Civil Services. Hope all of you are doing well. This is a video session on daily news and editorial analysis dated 27th of December. Through this video session, I'll be discussing the important news and editorial both from the Hindu and Indian Express. The analysis of the news will cater the aspirant of civil services examination, state public service commission examination and one day examination conducted by various state and union agencies. Through this video session, I'll give you the in-depth analysis of the news as per the relevant with the examination, right? And before I proceed, just to give you the idea about the upcoming prelims examination, which is due at 26th of May as per the UPSC official calendar for 2024. I mean, the examination is scheduled for 2024. Now we are left with almost close to five months, right? Now at this time is a time to devote specifically for prelims where you need to also practice a good number of MCQs and to help you out to get a good quality questions. We have Nishya All India Test Series program where we are providing 4900 plus questions. Along with that video discussions followed by demo test and free magazines for content enrichment. You can definitely check up on this for instant registration. You can use this QR code or you can refer to our website for further details. Now I'll be proceeding with the news highlights and further we'll come into the detailed analysis of the news one by one. So starting with the highlights of the day, the first important news talks about the ICMR initiatives for non-invasive testing specifically to tackle anemia. The third, second important news talks about India's and Russia with regards to the ink that is related to the Kundakulam nuclear power plant, something very important and significant for India. The third important news talks about India and Oman FTA, that is Free Trade Agreement, which is likely to be commenced in January 2024. And the other news, that is the government working for the PLI scheme, that is Prudential Link Incentive Scheme 2.0, is specifically for the steel sector. And I'll be concluding this session with editorial that talks about the new economics of inclusive growth, that talks about how the government need to put their focus, shift their focus and promoting towards the inclusive development to a larger extent. So we'll see the detail to that. Now, coming forward with the news analysis of the German day fund. So the first important news is about the non-invasive testing methods that has been recently devised out by uh, the ICF, ICMR ne actually pitch ki hai ki non-invasive techniques ya machines ki zarurat hai, methodology ki zarurat hai to overcome the part of anemia. Now, if you look at anemia as such in general in India, we have a huge number of cases that is reported. I'll tell you the complete data. Her age group me kis tarah se ye bifurcated hai. I'll give a detail in a while. But before that, ICMR, Indian Council for Medical Research has actually come up with the expression of interest jahan pe jo eligible organizations hain companies hain startups hain unse manufacturing ki baat ki gayi hai non invasive hemoglobin meters right to ensure that we are able to screen out the patient of anemia ki kis patient mein kis tarah ki rating hai now like for any other meters like we have glucose meter for 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 the part of the sugar level usi tarah se jo non invasive hemoglobin meters hogi वो हीमोग्लोबिन के लेवल्स को बताएगी इंडिविजुअल के बॉडी में एंड अ ब्रीफ अबाउट द नॉन इनवेसिव हीमोग्लोबिन मीटर्स व्हाट एग्जैक्टली इट इज एंड हाउ डज इट वर्क सो दिस इज द इमेज ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर मशीन हाउ इट्स एग्जैक्टली लुक लाइक दीस आर द अदर डिटेल्स दैट इज रिफ्लेक्टेड ऑन द स्क्रीन सो द नॉन इनवेसिव हीमोग्लोबिन मीटर इज अ डिवाइस जो कि हीमोग्लोबिन के लेवल को चेक करेगी इन द ब्लड विदाउट द नीड ऑफ ट्रेडिशनल ब्लड सैंपल थ्रू इनवेसिव प्रोसीजर्स लाइक नीड पिकिंग If you have come across the sugar test, I mean, जो insulin और glucose की level check की जाती है, उसमें pricking की जाती है और your blood sample is connected. Now in this method, there will be no pricking that will be done, and the sample will be collected through other methodology, right? So the non-invasive immunoglobin meters will use technology such as optical and spectrometers method, जहाँ पे spectroscopic methods के through hemoglobin के जो levels हैं उसको identify की जाएगी. ब्लड में किस तरह के डिजोल्वेंट है हीमोग्लोबिन की उसको चेक करके हीमोग्लोबिन के लेवल्स को बताया जाएगा नॉट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट दैट यू शुड हैव अ गुड कंटेंट ऑफ हीमोग्लोबिन इन योर नो द आयरन एक्चुअली इन द ब्लड इज बीइंग कैलकुलेटेड विद द लेवल ऑफ आयरन इन हीमोग्लोबिन इन द ब्लड साइड 
Now, the non-invasive hemoglobin play a crucial role in public health, enabling an efficient screening like anemia. Anemia, just like in India, we have a lot more patients. If you look at the National Family Health Survey data file, we have a complete data as per the age category. Well, I'll tell you in a while. So, kis tarah se ye bifurcations hai? And this particular machines, which is developed by any other entities, will definitely help the part of the section of the society to a larger extent. Now, this device is especially valuable for the frequent hemoglobin level monitoring and managing the chronic health and severe screening programs. So, this is something which will set a standard to how they, you know how the part of the surveillance for the hemoglobin level can be there in India and a self checking can also be done by the individual level as well. Now, baat kare anemia cases ki India mein. So, in India, we have a prevalence of anemia cases. Six group may actually se divide ki gai hai. This is per the data as per the National Family Health Survey 5. So, this is data. 67% of the anemia are there in children, which is aged group between 6 to 5. This is the age group bracket. Then we have 59% in adolescents girls, 57% in women, right? This is between the age group of 15 to 49. Then 52% are there for the pregnant women. These are all anemia cation as per their age group. 31% is evident in the adolescents boys. It is not only that only women are, uh, you know, they are having the symptoms of anemia. Boys are also in that group with the lesser number, but they are also in this particular disease. Now, this is not actually disease, this is a symptom. I mean, you can call it a larger extent. If further is say treat me, it can take up to further you know, stages of disease also. But at stage, we need we, we need to take into consideration that anemia is a problem for India. 25% of cases are men may report between the age 14 to 49. So these are the details, and this is per the National Family Health Survey file. Anemia continue to be a major public health problem despite the comprehensive anemia mukt bharat program comment ke taraf se already amb ki program hai that is anemia mukt bharat but we have not made substantial progress when it comes to eliminations of the anemia although har budget mein is bar bhi budget mein special allocations ki gayi hain but the progress need to be done more holistically now, if you look at the stage-wise data, that state-wise, if you talk about which state mein kitni, uh, prevalent hai anemia ki cases, for Ladakh, this is this is top in the rank, 92.8%. Then we have West Bengal, Assam, Gujarat, and Odisha. And state-wise, if you talk about children, then mostly that is Ladakh, Gujarat, Rajasthan, Punjab, and Haryana. So, if you belong to any of the state, interview ke liye bhi is tarah ke data ke liye relevant to and moving ahead with other news, that is Russia and India have inked the pact for the nuclear power plant, something very important for a country like India, where the assistance for the Kundakulam nuclear plant is being given by Russia. So, ye dono countries ke beech mein, specifically if you look at India and Russia, there is a strong bonding in the bilateral relationship and both countries are looking forward to further augment the nuclear power plant, specifically if India ki baat kare, Kundakulam may a plant hai set up, just ki further uh, you know, detailing or huni hai or further full capacity next to next year, say 2026 class ko rakhi Now, Kundakulam nuclear power plant ki agar baat kare, this is a nuclear plant station which is there at the district, uh, which is there at the state of Tamil Nadu mein hai. Re specifically districts ki baat kare, so this is at the Triveni district. It is one of the India's largest nuclear power plant, jahan pe kafi you know, important uh, power plant nuclear production se uske liye mani jati hai. This particular plant has a steady operations in design capacity of 1000 gigawatt, 1000 megawatt. This is MW. And it has been built in collaborations with the Atom Stuffer Export and Russia's state corporation hai, jo ki NPCI, in India ke tarap se, this is an India PSU which is actually making a collaborations. The plant is expected to start the operations in full capacity by 2027. So just to correct, the number is 2027. I have told 26, but it will be operational from 27. This is a correction. Now, India may or nuclear power plant, ki agar baat kare, there can be a question in the prelims examination, ki or kahan kahan plant hai. First, I have talked about the Kundakulam nuclear power plant. Then we have in Madras, then Kaikya, Thaipura, Tarapur, that is there in Maharashtra. Then we have Kakrapar, then we have Rajasthan, 
and Narora atomic power plant. So these are the details of the atomic power plant which India is actually having as of now. Now moving ahead, India and Oman free trade agreement. This is specifically with regards to the free trade agreement between India and Oman. So both countries is looking forward to augment their bilateral relationship or your free trade agreement jo hai, wo next month, I mean January 2024 se start between the countries. Recently, we have seen that the head of the state of Oman was on a visit to India where all sort of bilateral agreement and MOU's memorandum of understanding was signed between India and Oman. Now, if we talk about India and Oman ki trade relations, ki, so this is I mean, something very important. Oman is India's third largest um, no, exporters in terms of the Gulf cooperation countries. And it's very important sectors pe actually ye kaam kar As per the report by the Global Trade Research Initiatives, they are working on gasoline, iron and steel, electronics, machineries, and even boosting the part of comprehensive free trade agreement. If we specific sectors, ki agar baat kare, the export sector could also get boost in Oman, which include the motor gasoline, iron and steel, electronics, machineries, textile, plastics, bone meat, uh, boneless meat, essentials, like oils and motor cars. So these are the items export sector where yeah, that could also get boost in the Oman. Right? Now some other details that India is actually implementing this part of free trade agreement and this was started in May itself. So May 2022 may start ki gai thi. both Oman and UAE are the member of Gulf Corporations Council which is an important council for the Gulf countries and they have a, a, I mean a part of you know, unity a grouping which is actually taking a shot of the part of bilateral trade. The trade stood for this much value that is 12.39 billions and India's export have increased to 2.25 billions and to 4.8 billion in 2023. Import from the Gulf nations were at 8 billion in the last fiscal. Now moving ahead, government is working on the PLI sector for the steel. Specifically, the steel sector has been given more focus this time, where government is working on the production link incentive scheme 2.0. Or yes, specifically jo PLI scheme, hai, this is production link incentive scheme, will work for the steel sector in the country, right? So it will ensure that the adequate raw material for the steel sector are there in the country. Now increase in the steel demand, uh, basically post COVID, if you look at the data, COVID ke baad agar baat kare, I mean post COVID, the data is from 2022 onwards. So it says that the demand of steel has actually been in a surge. Why? Because the industrial sector are on a huge demand, real estate ki jese sector se, wo kafi zyada escalate hui hai. <clears throat> now the productions of consumptions, of the steel has grown after the recovery of coronavirus pandemic during April to November 2023 that cumulative production for the steel was 94.01 million metric ton and this is 14 percent on year on year basis right and consumption has been finished by 14 percent which is 89.97 million metric ton with the annual basis on the same period. So jitni zyada consumption badi ki usi hisab se hame us demand ko karne ke liye utni zyada productions ko bhi badhana padega so this is how we need to increase the part and we cannot import much i mean agar steel ki baat kare we do not we don't want to import much that is the reason government is looking forward with the pli scheme for the steel sectors now pli scheme ki baat kare what is pli scheme i think most of you must be aware ye scheme hai jo ki incentivize karti hai domestic manufacturing across all the sectors. There are various sectors to this. Now PLI schemes can their financial assistance di jati and their incremental productions are taken into consideration. The primary objective of the PLI scheme is to enhance the competitiveness, increase productions, attraction of investment and even creating the employment opportunity. So this call for a wholesome or inclusive development, right? Inclusive development of Indian economy. Now, if we talk about some sectors, if we start with 14 sectors, ke se start kiya tha, right? and this was the initial value of 1.97 crore rupees. These are the sectors which include mobile and manufacturing. Then we have critical key steering material and drug intermediaries, which is API, bhi aati hai, active pharma ingredients. Then we have manufacturing of medical devices, automobile and auto component, pharmaceuticals, special steels, telecom, then we have white goods, uh, AC and LEDs, textile produce, high efficiency solar power voltage modules, advanced chemistry cells, 
batteries and drone and drone components so these are the all part of the sectors where pli scheme is currently working as per the government of india norms and regulations now moving ahead with the editorial for the day that talks about the new economics for the inclusive growth now through this article i'll be give you the background after that we'll be following the part of the growth and infections mismatch which is there in the economy third we'll see the realities that has been missed out and we'll follow the conclusion now a book hai, uh, which was actually written by mr raghuram rajan is a former governor of the rbi is a former governor of rbi and rohit lama they have come up with a book the book name is breaking the mold reimagining india's economic future where they have specifically highlighted that india should stop making the manufacturing of the sectors bigger instead should focus on selling to the advanced services to the other countries this is what the suggestion has been and through this article the main part has been taken through this book but i'll give you some more other insight that is relevant from the examination perspective now it is surprising because india has been trying to do uh, this for the past 30 years but ye jo formula hai ye jo methods hai ye jo program ye jo usp hai was actually not working out for india right now the big uh, problem is that there isn't enough job for the people right and does not have enough income for the economy जो कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन होनी चाहिए हर एक इंडिविजुअल की कंसिडरिंग द फैक्ट दैट इंडिया हैज़ अ लार्जेस्ट डेमोग्राफिक डिविडेंड इन द वर्ल्ड द कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन इज नॉट एज सच बिकॉज मोस्ट ऑफ द पीपल आर अनएम्प्लॉयड द इकोनॉमी कैन नॉट बी इन अ गुड शेप अंटिल सिक्सटी परसेंट ऑफ द इंडियन आर क्लासिफाइड एज इकोनॉमिकली वीकर सेक्शन इन टाइटल विद द जॉब रिजर्वेशन दिस इज अ ब्रूटल फैक्ट फॉर द इंडियन इकॉनमी Now the growth affecting mismatch अगर बात करें जिस तरह से इंडिया की ग्रोथ है ग्रोथ इन बैलेंसेज देखी गई है तीन इंपॉर्टेंट कंपोनेंट पे स्किल जॉब और इनकम सो विल विल मेक अन इमोनिक्स फॉर दैट एस जी आई सो एस जी आई पे हमें काम करने की जरूरत है स्किलिंग पे जॉब इंक्रीज करने पर और ऐसी इनकम हो जो कि इंडिविजुअल के परचेजिंग पावर पैरिटी को भी बढ़ाती है द टू डी केस इंडिया देर वॉज अ टैग लाइन विच कॉल्ड फॉर इंडिया साइनिंग बट ट्रेडिशनली दिस पार्ट हैज नॉट बीन अचीव बिकॉज हमने एग्रीकल्चर के बाद सीधा मैन्युफैक्चरिंग पे दिखा दिया है जहाँ पे सर्विसेज पे वी नीड टू वर्क आउट सो व्हाट वी डिड वी फर्स्ट फ्रॉम द एग्रीकल्चर वी शिफ्टेड टू मैन्युफैक्चरिंग एंड वी हैव स्किप्ड द पार्ट ऑफ सर्विस सेक्टर नाउ दिस इज द एडवाइस दैट सर्विस सेक्टर नीड टू बी फर्दर ऑगमेंटेड एंड इवन ऑन द एडवांस लेवल अगर बात करें कंट्री लाइक चाइना वेन द पीपल वेर आउट ऑफ पॉवर्टी इस वजह से चाइनीज ने मैनुफैक्चरिंग पे खासा ध्यान दिया फेसिंग द पार्ट ऑफ the similar trajectory will not work for country like india now the realities are being messed up traditionally agar baat kare the focus of the numerical analysis would be there on the critical element jab pe citizen ki skilling pe khasi dhyan dene ki zarurat hai we also need to follow individual acquiring the skill enhancing their income and developing their contributions to the nation gdp right manufacturing and value added services are extended beyond the capital incentive factories and larger software facilities that the targets for the trillion gdp i mean india has actually target for 5 trillion dollar economy this can only be possible when we have a sustainable and inclusive growth for all then only we can chase this target until and unless it is not possible for india to become a 5 trillion dollar economy now to conclude the fact i mean if you look at the investment which we are having in terms of education and skilling for high end manufacturing and service sector will not only benefit the masses it can not uh, it can if it they cannot be employed the skill as you need jo ki mass populations ko actual mein employment the employment has become a big problem for country like india foreign direct investment agar fdi ki baat kare is not boosting the growth and does not increase the employment soon this is, is only specifying the certain percentage of the economy and economic policies must take advantage of opportunities jahan pe india और जो ग्रोइंग जॉब्स है उसकी जरूरतों को पूरी करें मासेस की जो जरूरतें हैं इन टर्म्स ऑफ गेटिंग द एम्प्लॉयमेंट डन शुड बी फर्स्ट एंड फॉर मोस्ट प्रायोरिटाइज द पॉलिसी मेकर्स मस्ट गेट इट डाउन टू द बेसिक इंक्लूसिव इकोनॉमिक ग्रोथ दिस इज हाउ द थिंग्स कैन वर्क एंड टू अ लार्जर एक्सटेंड वी शुड डेफिनेटली कॉल फॉर द इंक्लूसिविटी ऑफ द इकोनॉमिक डेवलपमेंट एंड हाउ दिस कैन बी डन दिस कैन बी डन थ्रू द स्किलिंग थ्रू द जॉब क्रिएशन एट द मार्केट प्लेस एंड इवन इंश्योरिंग दैट द इनकम विच इज देयर बाय द इंडिविजुअल हाउस होल्ड is at the part in sustainability in their overall daily livelihood options now moving ahead with the answers discussions kal ke agar sawal ki baat kare to pehli sawal uske correct option hai b 
इसमें जो करेक्ट ऑप्शन है वो आपने क्या मार्क किया है चेक करें इसके करेक्ट ऑप्शन वन और टू है द सेकेंड क्वेश्चन द करेक्ट ऑप्शन इज सी बोथ स्टेटमेंट वन एंड स्टेटमेंट टू आर करेक्ट डू चेक आउट वॉट यू हैव मार्क एज अ करेक्ट ऑप्शन रीडिंग आउट एक्सप्लेनेशन इज अगेन इम्पॉर्टेंट फॉर यू ना मूविंग अहेड विद द डेली एम सी क्यू क्वेश्चन फॉर द डे द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज अबाउट द नॉर्थ ईस्ट मानसून कंसिडर द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट अबाउट सेवेंटी फाइव परसेंट ऑफ कंट्रीज एनुअल रेनफॉल रिसीव फ्रॉम द नॉर्थ ईस्ट एंड मानसून it's confined the southern peninsula tamil nadu accounting for maximum rainfall and it is also known as winter monsoon so these are the option only one only two all three or none so only one only two all three or none so how you can participate in the question answer so you can simply write question number 1 in the comment section followed by your correct option a then b c and d and you can drop your answer in the comment section down below your participation is very important those who will be writing and leaving the comment section i'll be highlighting their comment in the next discussion for the day the second question for the day is consider the following statement about the sukhna wild reserve sanctuary this is situated in the himalayan foothills that is the northern east himalayan foothill it is a forestation that was done in the sukhna lake in order to save and soil lake development again there are other options like option 1 option 2 both 1 and 2 and neither one of them the questions are aligned to give you a framework jo ki recent upsc ki pattern change hai uske accordingly aapko prepare kare aap participate kar sakte hain isme answer likhne ke liye question number 2 followed by your correct option and you can drop your answer in the comment section down below so do participate write your answer in the comment section down below this was all about for the daily news and editorial analysis followed by the mcq questions if you have any other concern about test series admissions programs you can reach out to us we'll be more than happy to assist you for time being i'm signing off thank you so much for watching thank you for staying connected